Hello everyone, welcome to Times TV. Today we are at Grand Hayat Hotel in conversation with one of the internationally renowned Islamic scholars, Sheikh Ismail bin Musa Ming, the Grand Mufti of Zimbabwe. Asalaamu Alaikum sir. Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Thank you for joining us and being here uh, today with us. It's a great pleasure having you here. Barakallah Feek. So sir, please tell our viewers what brings you to Oman. Well, mashallah, the people of Oman, and uh, they invited me to come in, I think, three years back. And uh, it took us three years to actually make that arrangement due to the time and so on. But mashallah, uh, I pray that, inshallah, we can interact in a good way, in a way that we can uh, uh, all become better people and learn to develop our relationship with the Almighty and the relationship with the rest of the creatures of the same Almighty. Right. So if I'm not wrong, you'll be delivering three lectures within these three days. Yes, yes. And could you please tell us a little about the topics that you have picked for the lectures? Well, the topics uh, were actually chosen by my hosts, and I think they're topics of relevance. Uh, one is addressing the issue of the challenges that, uh, you know, the modern world faces, the Muslims in the modern world face. Uh, one is addressing the issue of the true message of the prophets of uh, the Almighty, uh, I think with a lot of people turning away from religion, looking at it as a, uh, as a burden rather than uh, an asset. Mm -hmm. And the third is uh, regarding women and you know, what Islam says about the, their role in civilization. And I think that's an important topic as well because there is a lot of misconception, there is a lot of mixture of culture with faith. So people need to know the, the difference between the two. And, uh, I, I pray that we can actually tackle these topics in, in the best possible way, the most balanced way that uh, I can, inshallah. So, sir, about the um, challenges of women, I mean, role of women in Islam, how do you see that topic? It's, it's a balance between what's happening uh, through cultural, uh, you know, uh, teachings that are sometimes quite backward, some of them. Uh, and not all of them, and sometimes a misinterpretation of Islamic teachings, as well as, uh, you know, the, the other side of it, where people are, are trying to abuse women with the name or, you know, with certain words and so on, and, and uh, fooling them into believing that this is actually uh, what we're supposed to do. Uh, and, and the balance of faith, whether it's Christianity, Judaism, or Islam, uh, and many other faiths, you know, mm -hmm. generally there would be a good balance when it comes to a person who has within them that faith, you recognize the maker, you have a good level of values, and, uh, you know, the, the role that is played by women, the role that's played by men, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, interlocking and there is a lot of uh, goodness in, in, in playing these roles and understanding them. You know, when we talk of equality, for example, people use the term uh, inequality mm. uh, a lot. And, and yes, definitely, we have been facing over the years, like I said, in marriages, in divorce, and in, in so many other matters and issues where people uh, tend to abuse women either way, you know, either by putting too many restrictions on them or by letting it so bad that they can be abused. There's no one to actually protect them sometimes. Yeah. Or they're unable to protect themselves because of the, the, the environment. So to create an environment that is beautiful, whereby uh, both men and women are protected, a very high level of uh, conduct and character, uh, I think it's a very challenging topic, to be honest. Yes, because and I personally am looking really forward to this topic. Yeah, to strike that balance is not easy. You know, you'll always, uh, you'll always hurt people who have different ideas. Mm. But we need to know that when the Almighty has said something, uh, you know, He's the maker. So you either believe or you don't believe. If you don't believe, you know, you're free not to believe. You cannot believe it's between you and the Almighty. And if people like us would like to believe, uh, for as long as that belief does not trample on the toes of others, uh, I think it's uh, just as free for us to believe. So if I believe that, you know, modesty, for example, would require that uh, a woman uh, dresses uh, according to a certain standard, for example, uh, and if, if, if I'm a woman and I believe that I should be doing that, I'm free to believe that. I mean, if you're dressed in a specific way, who am I to tell you that, you know, uh, this is it and that's it. If you believe in the Almighty, that belief itself should make you 
realize that this is what I think I need to do. And yes. it, Basically, it comes within. It, it comes from within. It comes from your belief. Because if you were to force people to do things, whether you force them to, to, to wear specific clothing or to remove specific clothing, and I'm saying this because the common factor here is to force. Mm. You know, some people force the, the women to actually cover in a certain way. And there are some uh, countries like France and so on who actually force them to remove certain coverings. They right. make it, they ban it. So these are, these are both extremes, uh, if you look at it. And we are, we're in the middle where we say, look, you know, these are the teachings. If you believe in them, you can adopt them. If you don't believe in them or if you're weak, uh, you know, it's between you and your maker. Uh, I mean, I cannot impose Islam on someone who's not a Muslim and someone who's not a Muslim cannot impose their uh, atheism or their religion or belief or, or disbelief on, on a Muslim. So it's, it's fair. It's a, and this is how we will grow as a globe. And I think uh, what's the mistake that's being made today is to deal with one extreme, we're actually going into the other extreme. Right, absolutely. So, sir, tell us a little about your journey. How did you start? How did you get to where you are right now? It's a beautiful journey. I think uh, it started with my... Uh, my father being an imam and, and, and a religious teacher and uh, myself memorizing the Quran with him at a very early age and learning you know, books and learning religion and uh, languages and so on as I grew older and uh, I had the, you know, the good fortune of uh, being born in Zimbabwe which is a very, very diverse country with people of all sorts of faiths and, and races as well. So as I grew up, uh, secondary school, I happened to go to a, a private college, which was a Christian college. And thereafter, I went to Medina Munawra. It was just amazing. It was amazing how it worked out. And after that, I went to India. I learned, uh, I learned Urdu, actually, to be honest. Oh, nice. And uh, I, yeah, I studied quite a few other things. And then I came back. I started off as an imam, a teacher, a lecturer. I, I was uh, appointed as a mufti at the, at the Council of Scholars in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And uh, we progressed from there, and subhanAllah, uh, <coughs> we, we got to where we are today, mashallah. This, was this your plan since day one, and when you saw your father as an imam? This is what you wanted to do when you, when you decided that this is my path, <sighs> this is going to be my profession and future? Actually, no. Uh, I, I wouldn't have dreamt that this is where I, I would end up. And this is why I tell the young people that, you know, the, the, sometimes it's normal to be confused. If you ask someone doing O level, A level, what would you like to do? You know, and they say, I really don't know. You say, well, it's normal not to know at this stage, but don't worry, life will take you somewhere. Some people know from a young age, I want to be a pilot. I mean, when we were kids, when, when we were asked at school, what would you like to become? I remember saying all sorts of things, you know. I, at one stage, I even said, I want to be a fireman, you know. And I think that's just because as a child, you see these things and wow, it wows you, you know. Yes. And then you say, ah, I'd like to be like that, not realizing that, no, that's me. You know. So as you grow older, things change. But I wouldn't have ever uh, dreamt that, you know, uh, the, the, the destiny would take me to where I have gotten to today. And I still ask the Almighty to bless every one of us and our children to be able to succeed in whatever they are doing. Absolutely. So what was your turning point? Well, I think the, the turning point was when I went to Medina. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I wanted to go to the, to the U.S. to, to study uh, ophthalmology and uh, somehow there was an application made by my father in cahoots with some people uh, from Medina uh, without me knowing. And when that application came through before the secular one, then my dad convinced me to say, look, it's Medina. How can you not go? Just go. If you don't like it, come back, you know. So when I went, uh, I didn't come back. I, I stayed there, mashallah. Okay, so that was, that, that was meant to happen. Yes, yes. Um, so about Oman, you said it took you three years to come here. Now that you're here, how do you feel? How, how's the response that you're receiving? Because I'm sure people are just, they have been you know, waiting for you to come to Oman. I think uh, if, I, if I was to say overwhelmed, uh, it wouldn't really serve justice to how I felt and, and, and I'm just getting used to it now. The hospitality, the people, the nature, uh, the weather, the surroundings, the nature, so much, so much more of Oman that I'm seeing and I'm just intrigued and impressed. Yesterday we drove to a place called Nizwa mm -hmm. and I visited the fort and learned about the rich history of this place and uh, 
I think it's amazing. One thing that stands out is I lived in Medina for many years, and uh, the, it reminds me of Medina Munawwara, actually. You know, the surroundings and uh, some of the mountains actually look like you're exactly in Medina. It was also quite cool. As we were going uh, towards the Nizwa, I, I realized that, you know what, it, there's too much of a similarity. Even the nature of the people, if you look at Medina Munawwara, the people are calm. I've always heard about, about Oman and how calm the people are and how uh, warm and hospitable they are, but I'm, I'm feeling it and I was telling a brother yesterday that everything positive, I only knew positive stuff, but everything I knew, I just ticked it one after the other, you know, <laughs> everything is just being ticked to say, yes, uh, you're right, this is there, that's there, this is there, and mashallah, it's really good. One thing unique that also stands out here is people are uh, brothers in, in, in the true brotherhood sense, you know, you can feel the link between people of various faiths and mm -hmm. various sects and so on. And that's, that's a unique gift that we need to preserve. Right, absolutely. So now that you are really, you know, falling in love with Oman and you're happy to be here, is there, are you planning for your next trip anytime soon? Since, you know, we would really like to have you more often to Oman. Inshallah. Oh, I would love to have stayed behind. <laughs> but obviously life doesn't permit sometimes to, 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 to stay behind. And uh, to come back, inshallah, at a certain <coughs> stage. In fact, yesterday a brother was telling me, you know, when my family member gets married, I'm going to invite you for the wedding, you must come. And I said, yeah, yeah I will come, you know. <laughs> Depends on the schedules and, and, and the times and whether, whether I'm available and whether it, it's feasible to come at the time. I mean, if I'm free at a certain date and something's happening here where maybe it's, there's a festival or there's something mm -hmm. else happening, it wouldn't be, uh, you know, worthwhile to... to, to, to coincide that. But inshallah, yeah, I'm open to it. I, I'm looking forward to it. In fact, I was thinking, uh, I was speaking to the Deputy Mufti and he was uh, telling me about the Ramadan programs here. Mm -hmm. And who knows, I might be a part of some of the Ramadan programs, if Allah wills. Inshallah, definitely. So talking about your schedule and out of curiosity, I just want to know, how is the day like in your life? It depends, because if I'm traveling, it's a little bit different, and if I'm at home, it's a little bit different. So when I'm traveling, it's so difficult that I, uh, my son, who's about 18, jo he's joined me a few times, and he says, I don't know how you do it. And I said, listen, imagine you're only carrying my bags, and that's how you feel. What about me who works? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a tough day, because one thing I've realized is people are always excited when you get somewhere, not realizing that you've just been to a place before that and another place before that. So, mm -hmm. like food, I, I give you an example. Here, they're so hospitable, they make sure you eat. We went to Nizwa and the elderly man from there, uh, Am Salim, he was making us eat. And, and I'm trying to tell him, hang on, I've eaten, you know, I usually just eat once a day. And he was making us eat and he said, no, no, you have to. And so, so they told me, well, today is the exception. You, know? <laughs> you can eat more today. And I said, do you realize I get told that almost every day? <laughs> I was about to tell you, if you visit him the next day, he'll tell yeah. you the same thing that it's an exception but today. What he doesn't realize is, uh, because I go to different places, it's not like I was at home and I just came here and went back. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I, I've come here in the Philippines for... Uh, for uh, and so, subhanAllah, everyone thinks, well, don't worry, it's an exception. When you go home, you can, you know, you can go back to your routine. But uh, that's not it. You have to be in your routine, even on travel. So it's very interesting. Uh, back at home, a typical day, obviously, the Imam uh, in the masjid on a roster basis with lectures and, and, and so on, te uh, teaching on a, a roster basis back at home. So it works that way. Quite a full day. I love spending time with my family and I think the fact that I travel so much, it mm -hmm. makes it more important. So I look forward to seeing them and they look forward to seeing me. It's good in a way because the excitement about reunion and meeting is so much. I know, know it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So thank you once again, Sheikh Ming, for uh, talking to us and joining us. It was indeed a great pleasure talking to you. It was a pleasure and an honor. Thank you so and much. And we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Inshallah, inshallah. Thank you so much for having me. For more interesting videos, keep watching Times TV.